now we are ready to drop the engine. All right, today we are converting a Vespa, a classic vintage two-stroke Vespa to electric. Uh, these are my bread and butter. I do these all the time. It should probably take about an afternoon because I've done a lot of the prep work. So I am going to walk you through the process of how you can do this in three easy steps. We're gonna pull the motor will be our first step. Second step is going to be installing the swing arm. And then third step is going to be all the wiring. Um, for all of you two-stroke enthusiasts, vintage Vespa diehards that hate to see something like this uh, modernized, don't worry, this gas engine from this Vespa is going to be going into something else. And I'll leave it at that, you'll see that in the future. So let's get after it. Single cylinder, 150cc two-stroke engine. Now, this is a Vespa TS125. It's a very rare scooter to see here in the United States. Very popular in Europe. It's kind of the in-between model of the vintage Vespas of the 70s and then the more modernized Vespas of the 80s. Um, honestly, it's one is why it's one of the most desirable Vespas, just because it has some more modern performance with a vintage looking design. Now, this should have a 125cc engine in it. However, this does have a VBB 150cc two-stroke engine. Um, although it has a little bit more displacement, uh, it doesn't honestly get that much more power than the 125 would have. So, oh well. Okay, after we have removed the cowl, our first step is going to be, before we can even pull this engine, is to get the gas tank out of here, which sits under the seat. Um, before we do that though, let's take a quick look over this engine. See, we've got, I mean, pretty good compression. Everything seems to be working. The starter sounds good. Uh, I've got some longer wires coming out for a shifter box, which probably means that this has been redone at some point in time. I mean, this is definitely not original paint, so something has been done. We do see some weeping oil um, coming from Oh man, up here. Looks like it's actually coming from the top of the engine case. Not a good sign. We'll see what's going on once we get into it. Uh, but let's start with the gas tank. Okay, to remove the gas tank, pretty easy. We gotta remove the seat. We gotta remove this back rack. This is actually a modified magnet. So this is a magnet seat, but it's an 11 mil and we're just gonna get those removed. All right, to remove the tank, you do need to take out your fuel tap and your choke cable. Uh, best way to do it is to kind of lift up your tank and you can kind of get in there. You can see sort of down there, all the connections. You do need to disconnect those. It's not the easiest thing in the world, but good luck. Okay, gas tank is removed. Uh, put it on a towel just in case you don't want to scratch it up. We're going to use that later, just the top. Uh, hopefully, if you're doing this, this is what the inside of your gas tank looks like, or the uh, gas cavity. Super clean, really nice, no rust, no dust, no spiders or anything. Spilled a little bit of gas, we'll clean that up. But great, next step. Let's unhook all the wires to the engine itself, like our throttle cable, our throttle cable, shifter cables, um, and our clutch. Okay, checking in, now that we have everything done with the Vespa uh, cables wise. We've pulled all the wires that connect to the engine junction box. We have disconnected the throttle cable, the choke cable, the two uh, shifting cables. The clutch is down here. Excuse me, that is actually the brake. Where did my clutch cable go? Oh, there it is, clutch. Everything's disconnected. Now we can actually drop the engine. Final actual step though is to first make sure that your muffler is not connected to the frame at all. In this case, this one is not. It's only mounted to the swing arm. And then our final connection point is going to be, boom, right here, just dropping out the shock mount. So let's do that. Okay, now we are ready to drop the engine. 
Uh, shock mount is disconnected. Uh, the bolt is just sitting in there so the whole thing doesn't drop. I highly recommend move your cowls just in case anything crazy happens. You definitely don't want to scratch those. And then I'll show you how we do this part. So we are going to jack up the entire Vespa to get the engine out. Best way to do this is to drop this off of the center stand so you can actually jack the whole thing up with no issues. Okay, obviously we can't actually get it perfectly balanced since the muffler is blocking the midway point of the Vespa. So I'll show you how we'll fix that. Shock mount is disconnected. Okay, to unbolt your actual engine mounts, it's a 22 mil, so 22 mil on this side, same on that side. We'll remove it. Here we go. Support the engine, grab the head, grab the kickstand, grab something for when it drops. balanced on this stuff for now. Back it out of the way. And we can just roll this away. Ta-da! Okay, we are now ready for our electric conversion. Everything is out. Got a nice empty bay. Let's get to it. Okay, next step in our electric conversion is to take our electric motor assembly and install it into the engine cavity. Um, honestly, this is the best time to clean everything up inside. You can see I've already used a bottle of Simple Clean and just wipe down all the soot inside here um, and all of the exhaust fumes that have kind of dirtied up this cavity. So it's a good time to do it. It's really the time that this will be the most bare. So we're gonna roll this in. We're gonna hook it into place. Hmm. It's a shame I have an extra Vespa engine. <sighs> if only I had an extra Vespa that needed an engine. Hmm. 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 